When it comes to cordless drills, is it possible that the least expensive brand we'll be testing, which costs under $50, is just as good as the most expensive one, which costs over $500? Today, we've got eight different brands of drills to test, so let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. We'll test the maximum torque of each brand. We'll also test the speed of the drills under load. We'll see if any of these drills can beat this Milwaukee Impact driver. At a price of $45 for just the drill and not the battery and the charger is this Bauer brand. 20 volt Hypermax Lithium, high performance motor, all metal gear construction, compact lightweight design. All the drills we'll be testing are half inch cordless. Max torque, 450 inch pounds. We're gonna test that. RPM zero to 450 and zero to 1700. The Bauer is heavy duty guaranteed for 90 days. The Bauer brand is made in China. The Bauer uses a brushed motor. The Bauer has a single LED that stays activated for four seconds after the trigger is released. With a three amp hour battery, the Bauer weighs just three pounds, 15.8 ounces, 7.75 inches in length. Let's compare the noise level of the drills with the sound meter 24 inches from the tool. And the Bauer is very close to 80 decibels. The Bauer uses a mechanical clutch and it's pretty loud at 100 decibels. The second least expensive brand we'll be testing is this Ryobi brand, which costs $70 for the drill, the battery, as well as the charger. Up to 500 inch pounds of torque, 0 to 450, as well as 0 to 1750 RPM. Three year warranty. The Ryobi brand is made in China. The Ryobi comes with a 1.5 amp hour battery, but we'll be using a 4 amp hour battery for the testing. The Ryobi has a brushed motor. The light on the Ryobi only stays illuminated while the trigger is engaged. The Ryobi weighs four pounds, 3.9 ounces. At eight and a quarter inches, the Ryobi is slightly longer than the Bauer. At 78 decibels, the Ryobi is slightly quieter than the Bauer. The clutch on the Ryobi is also a little bit quieter at 99 decibels. At a price of $95 for just the drill and not the battery and charger is this Rigid brand. The Rigid uses a brushless motor. Up to 650 inch pounds of torque. Lifetime warranty. Micro clutch premium clutch designed with over 100 settings for maximum precision. Die cast gearbox for extended tool durability. The drill comes with the handle. The Rigid brand is made in China. The light on the Rigid stays on for 10 seconds once the trigger is released. The Rigid is the heaviest yet at four pounds, seven ounces. At seven and a quarter inches, the Rigid is the shortest drill yet. The Rigid is the loudest yet at 83 decibels. The clutch is also pretty loud at 100 decibels. At a price of $135 for just the drill and not the battery and charger is this DeWalt brand. Just like the Rigid, the DeWalt also has a brushless motor. The DeWalt has three speeds. Max power, 820 unit watts out, up to 2000 RPM. 11 clutch settings, three year warranty, made in the USA with global materials. The DeWalt has three light settings. The DeWalt offers by far the brightest light on the highest light setting. The DeWalt is the heaviest drill yet at four pounds, 10 ounces. The DeWalt is very close to eight inches in length. At 81 decibels, the DeWalt is slightly quieter than the Rigid. The mechanical clutch on the Bauer, Roby, and Rigid are quite a bit louder than the DeWalt's electronic clutch, which is only 73 decibels. At a price of $149 for just the tool and not the battery and charger is this Makita brand. Most powerful 1,090 inch pounds of torque. We're gonna test that. Brushless motor, up to 2,100 RPM. The Makita brand is made in China. The Makita has two LED lights that stay activated for 10 seconds once the trigger is released. The Makita is by far the heaviest drill yet at five pounds, two ounces. The Makita is very close to eight inches in length, about the same as the DeWalt. The Makita is very close to 80 decibels. The mechanical clutch on the Makita is the loudest yet at 102. At a price of $153 for just the drill and not the battery and charger is this Milwaukee brand. Up to 60% more power, up to an inch and a half shorter length, up to two times faster speed under heavy load. Peak torque, 1200 inch pounds, up to 2000 RPM. The Milwaukee comes with a five-year warranty. The Milwaukee is made in Vietnam. Milwaukee's LED stays activated for 10 seconds once the trigger is released. The Milwaukee weighs nearly the same as the DeWalt at four pounds, 11.4 ounces. The Milwaukee is the shortest drill yet at only seven inches. The Milwaukee is tied for the rigid for the loudest at 83 decibels. The electronic clutch on the Milwaukee is pretty quiet at only 70 decibels. At a price of $154 for just the drill and not the battery and charger is this Bosch brand. Max RPM 2100. Max torque 755 inch pounds. The drill is made in Malaysia. The Bosch includes a brushless motor. The Bosch includes a handle. The Bosch weighs four pounds, 9.2 ounces, which is only a couple of ounces less than Milwaukee and the DeWalt. The Bosch LED stays activated for 10 seconds once the trigger is released. The Bosch is 7.75 inches in length. The Bosch is the quietest yet at 77 decibels. Interesting setup with the Bosch. When the mechanical clutch is activated, the electric motor also powers down. 98 decibels. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing at $544 for the battery, the charger, and the drill is this Festool brand. I'll be using 4 amp hour batteries in all the other brands except for the Bauer brand. The Bauer brand just doesn't make a 4 amp hour battery. The battery is made in China. 
The battery charger is made in Germany. Max torque, 531 inch-pounds. The drill is made in the Czech Republic. The Vestal is supposed to spin nearly twice as fast as the competition at 3,800 RPM in mode 4. The Festool has a brushless motor. According to their website, this drill will stand up to anything you can possibly throw at it or throw it at. With the Festool, you can easily remove the chuck and install a driver. In order to activate the four LEDs on the Festool, you have to press a button next to the lights. The Festool weighs 4 pounds, 10.3 ounces, which is nearly the same as the Dewalt and the Milwaukee. At 9 inches, the Festool is the longest drill in the lineup. At only 73 decibels, the Festool is the quietest drill. The electronic clutch is also pretty quiet, around 70 decibels. If tool weight is a big factor in your purchasing decision, the Bauer with a 3 amp hour battery is the lightest tool at 64 ounces. Most of the other brands fall between 71 and 75 ounces, but the Makita is by far the heaviest at 82 ounces. If you need a drill that's compact enough for tight spaces, the Milwaukee is the shortest at only 7 inches, but the Rigid is only 7.25. The Bauer and the Bosch are 7.75, and the Dewalt and the Makita are 8. The slowest the Bauer would spin without stalling is 27 RPM. The Bauer is supposed to produce 450 RPM in first gear and it actually did better than advertised at 465. It also beat its 1,700 rating by producing 1,733 RPM. The Roby offers even better low RPM control than the Bauer at only 19. The Roby came very close to meeting its 450 first gear RPM rating. It was around 90 RPM short of meeting its 1,700 RPM rating. Very good low RPM control with the Rigid at only 27. On a fully charged battery, the Rigid was very close to meeting its 550 RPM rating. The Rigid was a little over 100 RPM short of meeting its 2100 rating. Very good low RPM control with the Dewalt at only 23. The Dewalt is supposed to produce 450 RPM in first gear and it made 453. It also exceeded its 1300 second gear rating by 40. The Dewalt also did slightly better than its 2000 RPM rating at 2011. The Makita's low RPM control is the same as the Dewalt's at 23. The Makita was very close to meeting its 550 first gear RPM rating. It was slightly over its 2100 RPM rating at 2111. Pretty good low RPM control with the Milwaukee at 35. The Milwaukee came up about 30 RPM short of meeting its 550 RPM rating in first gear. It was nearly 200 RPM short of meeting its second gear rating. The Bosch has the best low RPM control yet at only 7.3. At 433 RPM in first gear, the Bosch came up a little bit short of meeting its 480 RPM rating. It was nearly 200 RPM short of meeting its 2100 rating. Very good low RPM control with the Fest tool at only 11. It was slightly over its 400 RPM first gear rating at 404. It also beat its 850 second gear rating and it was over its third gear rating by nearly 100. The Fest tool also exceeded its fourth gear 3800 RPM rating by 75. This next test rig will let us measure the torque output of the drills. It's a pretty simple setup with a piece of all thread that turns freely. The nuts have been welded into position. If you're working with delicate fasters, you're going to want a clutch that disengages the drill at very low levels of torque. The torque adapter will measure in inch-pounds beginning with the Bauer. On the lowest torque setting, the Bauer didn't make quite enough torque to move the torque adapter off of zero inch-pounds. So the Bauer did very well on the lowest torque setting. The Bauer produced 141 inch-pounds, offering a pretty wide range of torque settings. Just like the Bauer, the Ryobi also uses a mechanical clutch and it performed well on the lowest torque setting. On the highest torque setting, the Ryobi produced 114 inch-pounds. The Rigid did very well on the lowest torque setting at 0 inch-pounds. 180 inch-pounds on the highest setting. Unlike the first three brands, the Dewalt uses an electronic clutch. On the lowest torque setting, the Dewalt made 76 inch-pounds. Definitely not a good setup for delicate work. On level 11, 245 inch-pounds for the Dewalt. The Makita has a mechanical clutch and it performed very well on the lowest torque setting, 0 inch-pounds. 78 inch-pounds on the highest setting. On the lowest torque setting, the Milwaukee made 136 inch-pounds, definitely not a tool for delicate work. On the highest clutch setting, level 14, 231 inch-pounds. The Bosch has a mechanical clutch and it did a great job on the lowest clutch setting at 0 inch-pounds. 69 inch-pounds on the highest clutch setting. Just like the Dewalt in the Milwaukee, the Festool struggled on the lowest clutch setting at 92 inch-pounds. 151 inch-pounds on the highest setting. So if you need a tool with a soft touch for delicate applications, all the drills with mechanical clutches were able to disengage the drill with less than one inch-pound of torque. However, the Dewalt, Milwaukee, and Festool have electronic clutches and you'll have to rely on your skills using the variable speed trigger for applications requiring low torque. The batteries are fully charged. Some of the manufacturers claim some pretty big numbers for maximum torque. However, tool manufacturers use testing techniques that help sell tools and they just aren't very realistic. So in this next test, I'll be using each one of the drills in first gear and placing the inline torque adapter in position. We'll see how far each of the drills can drive a half inch by 10 inch lag bolt and we'll keep track of the maximum torque. Testing the Bauer, 143 inch pounds. Testing the Ryobi, 131 inch pounds. So Bauer remains in the lead. Testing rigid. 
and the Rigid moves into the lead with 226 inch-pounds. Tessing DeWalt. And DeWalt did by far the best yet at 403 inch-pounds, taking the lead from Rigid. Testing Makita. And Makita did very well at 348 inch-pounds, but that's not enough to take the lead from DeWalt. Testing Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee just about drove the half-inch lag bolt all the way into the 4x4s. Milwaukee takes the lead with 468 inch-pounds. Testing the Bosch. Two hundred and eighty nine inch pounds for the Bosch. Milwaukee holds on to the lead. Testing the Fest Tool. And the Fest Tool made slow and steady progress, finally giving up at two hundred and fifty inch pounds. So if you need a drill that can handle high torque applications, the Milwaukee came out on top at 468 inch-pounds and DeWalt second at 403. Makita finished in third place at 348, Bosch 289, Festool 250, Rigid 226, Bauer 143, and Ryobi 131. The next test will be a time test to see which brand performs the best driving in these five inch lag bolts. Each brand will have a chance to drive in five lag bolts as quickly as possible. Testing the Bauer. From the sound of the bower, it's definitely losing quite a bit of speed under load. For the five bolts, it averaged 6.59 seconds in first gear. Testing Ryobi. And the Ryobi definitely seemed to slow down more than the bower. 7.45 seconds on average. So bower holds on to the lead. Testing the Rigid. And the Rigid is quite a bit faster than the bower and Ryobi at only 5.8 seconds. Testing the Dewalt. And the DeWalt delivers about 100 less no-load RPM, and it was nearly as fast as the Rigid at 5.83 seconds. So Rigid holds on to the lead. Testing Makita. And the Makita is the fastest yet at 5.24 seconds on average and takes the lead from Rigid. Testing the Milwaukee. 5.51 seconds for the Milwaukee. It's very close, but Makita holds on to the lead. Testing the Bosch. 6.68 seconds, which is around a second slower than Rigid, DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Makita. Testing Fest Tool. Six point six eight seconds. So Makita came out on top at five point two four seconds. Milwaukee five point five one. Rigid five point eight. DeWalt five point eight three. And Bauer fifth at six point five nine seconds in first gear. So up next, let's test the performance of the drills in the highest speed setting, beginning with the Bauer in second gear. All the batteries are fully charged. The Bauer lasted about two seconds and didn't have quite enough torque and came up about a half an inch short. Testing the Roby in second gear. And the Roby wasn't quite as fast as the Bauer at 2.25 seconds and just like the Bauer it came up about a half an inch short. Testing the Rigid in second gear. And the Rigid completely drove in both bolts and averaged 2.04 seconds. Testing DeWalt in third gear. And the DeWalt averaged 1.56 seconds, about a half a second faster than the Rigid, and moves into the lead. Testing the Makita in second gear. 1.84 seconds, so the DeWalt holds on to the lead. Testing Milwaukee in second gear. 1.87 seconds, so DeWalt holds on to the lead. Testing the Bosch. 2.02 seconds, and the Bosch moves into fourth place just ahead of the Rigid. Testing the Festool in level four. Let's try level three, which is very comparable to the RPM of the other brands. 2.47 seconds on average. A while back we tested impact drivers and Milwaukee Fuel totally dominated the showdown. So the question is, will the Milwaukee Fuel impact driver outperform a drill? The Milwaukee impact driver is on level three. 2.88 seconds for the impact driver on average, so the drills are a little bit faster. 
So DeWalt came out on top at 1.56 seconds, Makita 1.84, Milwaukee 1.87, Bosch 2.02, Rigid 2.04, and Festool 2.47. The next test is an endurance test to see how each one of the brands performs when we attempt to spin this engine over for two minutes. Even though the spark plug's been removed, it takes a lot of effort to spin this engine over since the engine brake is still applied. I've attached a green rope to the flywheel so we can see how fast this engine is spinning. We'll see if each of the brands can spin the engine over in second gear, and if it can't, we'll switch down to first. Testing the Bauer brand. Unfortunately, the Bauer just doesn't make enough torque to spin the engine over in second gear. The Bauer survived the two-minute test in first gear. Unfortunately, the Ruby just doesn't make enough torque to spin the engine over in second gear. The Ruby definitely smells a little hot. Testing the Rigid. Unfortunately, the Rigid just doesn't make enough torque to spin the engine over in second gear. The Rigid finished the test in first gear. DeWalt had a little bit of a problem getting started, but once it got started, it did just fine. So I went ahead and ran the DeWalt an extra 20 seconds to make up for the time it struggled at the beginning of the test. Testing Makita. Unfortunately, Makita shut off about halfway through the test, so I went ahead and switched to first gear to continue the test. Testing the Milwaukee. Okay, no issues with Milwaukee getting started and it lasted for two minutes. Testing the Bosch. The Bosch didn't have a problem getting started, but it shut down at 36 seconds. So the Bosch had to finish the test in first gear. Festool didn't have enough power in third or fourth gear. Testing second gear. The Festool performed very well in first gear. So which brand is best? I'm really impressed with the Milwaukee's torque as well as its compact size. However, the DeWalt as well as the Makita have their own strengths as well. I'd recommend any of those three brands. If you've already invested in the Bauer lineup and you already have the battery and the charger, $45 for a drill, especially for light duty or occasional use, is gonna be very hard to beat. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer recommended. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.